light skin wiggle. Yeah. <laughs> How basketball saved my life. With your host. At the easy button. At Torn to Dawn. Without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, chat. Life tried to drown me. This hoop is like my life jacket. This ice in my veins is something Titanic. Lockdown defense kept me out that center for detention divine. And eventually passes over to my center. Alleyways are the alley oops. Some got no looks and passed away when somebody shoots. Back in court duos, but nobody hoops. The wrist follow through, but the cuffs got a loop. Pick a book or pick the biggie book. It's just you and I out running suicides. Me, I was out running suicide. Boy, I'm going in, dropping gems that I picked up in these gems. I can't slack, I've been down and back. I'm just trying to share a few tales from this thing called life. Count my assist, but I swear that basketball really saved my life. Yeah, uh, chat. I swear it saved my life. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of How Basketball Saved My Life. I'm your host, The Easy Button. And Twana Dawn. And we got a very special guest in here for y'all today. Got my man Kellen McCoy in the house. What's, What's crack a lacking? You're going to have to have some fun in here. So <laughs> loose it up, baby. Loose yeah, it up. I got you. All right. So Kellen played three years varsity in high school. Um, played junior college. I'm going to let him get into the specifics, but he played junior college. Then he went on to play Division I right after that. And then after that, he went on to play overseas. Then after that, he decided he was going to get into, into the coaching game. Okay? So, tell it, man. Talk to us about yourself a little bit. Tell them, first of all, anything you want to say to the people before we get started. Uh, I mean, I'm like my guy, Eves, uh, I'm, I'm excited for you starting this thing. With uh, with Tuan here, and uh, you know, I, I think it's I think it's a really really cool um, thing to be doing. I think it's gonna pick up some speed behind it, and um, and y'all y'all support him. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Tuan, you got anything to say before we get started? Hey, man, I'm just I'm excited to hear this man's story, man. He he done a lot that I've seen since I've known this man, so just excited to hear about him. You know, it's crazy though. It's like before I knew you, I knew you because yeah, right. you're. I just kept hearing your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just kept hearing your name like, oh, because, you know, I'm, I've only been here for like five or six years. And so people see me come on the scene back when I was really still playing. And they're like, this dude can play. Have you met this guy that can play? Have you met this guy? Have you met this dude, Kellen? You know, name and I'm voice. like, I'm like, I don't know none of these dudes, you know. Yeah. And they're like, I'm like, what's Kellen like? I hear because that, at that time I had heard your name too many times. So yeah. I started asking, like, who is this dude, Kellen? That everybody keep telling him he's the coldest guard here. He's the coldest. <laughs> I swear, that's what people would say. He's the coldest guard in, in Oklahoma. I'm like, who is this dude? They was like, man, he's bop this short, but you won't be able to tell it once you get out there right. and once you're playing against him. Yeah. He will give you everything you can handle. And I'm sitting there like, I ain't never met a little dude that can give me everything I can handle. <laughs> so with that being, I think that's a good segue, man. So talk to us about being short. How tall are you? Yeah. Five, five, six, you know. Five, but did six, they list you as five cool. nine? <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm thinking like high school, you know. Even like my assistant here, DJ, he laughs about how when he went to go see me for the first time, he heard yeah. a lot about me and um, read the newspaper with his dad that said I was six foot. Yeah, <laughs> and, he, and he came, to, he came to the game, and he's like, well, "Where's he at? Where's he at?" And then he saw me. He's like, "Hey, he's six foot. If he's six foot, I'm six five. Right. <laughs> um, DJ yeah. shorter than you. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So, but you know, um, you know, be, be, being short, you know, a lot of people may look at it as like a, as a disadvantage, and um, they always you know, looking for excuses, yeah, ain't they? As a disadvantage or an excuse, and uh, you know, throughout my life and, and my experience, I just learned to kind of use it as an advantage and and to figure out ways to uh, to use you know my 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 lack of height. Um, like against the people that are, that I'm playing against, and, and but it's also just motivated me to to. to so how, how do you use it against the people you're playing against? Like how did you use it to your advantage? Well, I mean, you know, when you when you're shorter, that means you're lower to the ground. Big facts. Um, you know, that means you're closer to the basketball. Uh, you're usually quicker. You know, can get you, through some small spaces. So. You say that it is so true because like they always try to put a bigger guard on me uh -huh. when I was in high school. I played junior college too, and. Went on after that. This is about you, so we're going to stay on topic. 
they always put a bigger guard on me. Yep. And I always, that was fine for, like, I never, nothing changed. Mm -hmm. But when they put that lower guard on me, the little guard on me, that's when I struggled oh, yeah. the oh, yeah. most. Yep, yep. Because I couldn't even get the shot up because they yeah, was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like. They just, they just get all up in you. And they were smacking out my hands, so. Yep, down, down there low to the ground, so it, it, it could be an advantage, too. Great point, man. Um, so then how did it change your mentality and approach and just how you went on about everyday life? Uh, I mean, I, I always felt like I had to work harder than everybody else. And so, um, you know, from a very, very young age, you know, I, I just developed a, a, a super, super uh, a great work ethic where I, where I put in a lot of extra work. Um, but it also, you know, I, I and it's – Honestly, I, I, I point to one thing, and it's, you know, being so small as a basketball player, what's the first thing that people want to do to you? They want to try to post you up. Big facts. And like so, that. you know, when I was younger and I, I tried to go up to the Y, and, I mean, I could say some names of, of people that were just like – because I'd always want to play with the older guys who only run. And that, this is when the YMCA run was, you know. It was popping. Yeah, when I first crazy. got here, it was yeah, popping. crazy, like crazy. I, I only yes. hear about and, it. I didn't get to see it. Um, and there were some older guys, you know, Rayford Young and Richard Peoples. And, oh, yeah, that would be funny. And, um, and a lot of other the guards that would, would just try to post me up. And this is when I was probably like freshman. Oh, Rayford ain't trying to post you up, yeah, did he? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's no so, bigger than you. Yeah, he's bigger than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, you know, when I was young and I was trying to go out there and play with those older guys, they would do it, and I would just get so frustrated by it. And so, um, you know, obviously I, I figured out a little bit about weights, but, but then it also just gave me like a – Hey, I'm gonna fight you down there. You're not gonna bully me. Right. Mentality, um, and just kind of developed <laughs> a, a crazy toughness um, and, and, a, and a mindset. You know, I call it little man syndrome. Yes, sir. Um, to where you know I, I was gonna fight you. You weren't gonna just you know bully me, and, um, and 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 I learned to use it to my advantage. So, with you being short, did you ever feel like um, there was a time where you felt like basketball wasn't gonna go for you where you wanted it to go? No, I, I never for one second wow, like that's one second thought that. Uh, that's I, I would not. I wouldn't accept anybody telling me no. And it was you know it's crazy you know going through through middle school you know people people would say oh he's he's too small he won't be able to play bars uh, high school basketball. Right. And I get to high school and I'm doing it at high school level. He's too small. He won't be able to do it at the college level. So then I I uh, I go do it junior college level. Oh, well he you know he can't do it junior college level. I do it junior college level. Oh, well, he'll never be able to do it. Division so, how did it feel so when just, he was breaking all them people trying to down downplay? I, I, I didn't. I, I just kept my 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 eyes forward. And <laughs> I, I didn't say it, but you know, it, it, it's a good feeling knowing you prove all, all those people wrong. You ain't got to say nothing. Exactly. That's what I tell my, my guys here. I'm like, when when you doing when you doing something good, everybody else will tell you. You ain't got to say nothing to nobody else. And um, and good when feeling. people are doubting you and, and and you go prove them wrong, you know you prove them wrong. They know you proved them wrong. It's just a matter of if, they, so then, if they're willing to let you know that you proved them wrong. That's so then when said. did you acknowledge, like, you know what? I was kind of that dude, like, you know? Because when you're doing it. You felt it, it like you, you don't, really felt it. When you're yeah. doing it, you don't, like, you don't think you're that good. People are telling you, you're like, man, I, I sucked last game. Or, I'm still working. You know, I had all these turnovers. Like, when did you feel like you could say, I'm that guy? I don't, think, I don't know if I ever really, uh, really felt that I was that guy because I, I think that was part of my mindset that that um that helped me be as successful as I was is that I was just going to continue to try to get better and continue to work and and um and I don't think I ever I've ever felt that way you know um even even after you know like big games you know I still you know I, I was to, to the next one what I got what I got to do now what I got to do now what I got to do next um and you know who's who, who's got who's doing this better than me and so I, I was just always motivated to keep trying to do more and more. So did you always keep your eyes on the competition then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I watched. I, I was really, really in tune to, like, always in high school, who the top guards were in the state, who guys were getting offered by, you know, Division One colleges, junior college, who was ranked higher than me. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go outdo him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go outdo him. He's got this offer. Okay, I'm going to try to go. Go out his head. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I've always – Always looked at the competition and and um and you know wanted to, wanted to be better. So in here in, uh, in high school, you said you played varsity all three years. Um, you got any accolades that you were like highly, like juiced about, excited about that you accomplished in high school? Uh, like honestly, like I in high school, you know, it wasn't like a great crazy like crazy experience. I I, I did well. Like I, I scored a bunch of points. Our teams weren't great. My sophomore year, we 
had a bunch of seniors that were talented. So I was kind of a, a rogue on that team. Um, but I mean, I, you know, I, I probably averaged like eight points a game then. And then my, my junior year and senior year of high school, I kind of took over a little bit more okay. and uh, scored a whole bunch. I, I was an all stater as a senior. Um, and, you know, I think I was one of the better players in St. Oklahoma. But, but I mean, then mm-hmm. you're talking some talent, you know, CJ Henry and um, Epe Udo and Obi Manello and, and got guys that, you know, playing, played in the NBA and okay. professionally a long time. But, um, you know, all state's definitely probably the, the highest accolade I had my senior year. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now we talked about kind of a little bit about, you know, high school, touched on junior college. Talk to us about that transition from junior college to uh, Weber State a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, so it was obviously very different going from junior college basketball to Division One basketball just because of the, the, everyday, the everyday life is very different. You go from – Living in a, in a super super small town where you don't you know you got a Sonic we had a Sonic and a Simple Simon's Pizza <laughs> and, and then we had a uh, we had a subway at the Love's gas station right off the highway and um in a, in a town Which I used to parking lot pimp oh uh. <laughs> just, sit the, just sit in the parking lot and hang out you know Bro. Man, just not a whole not a whole lot to do and so that and and you know just the 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 meals at the cafeteria and the early mornings and the bus rides and the gear and just it, you know, junior college is, is, a, is a rough lifestyle. I, I, I tell everybody, well, it's not, it's not, for, it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Night, you know, boring nights with nothing to do and but you, you know, you find stuff to do and, and that, that that ended up being one of the greatest experiences of my life. Bro, you're taking me back. Yeah, my teammates you. used to drive the Hutch from Dodge City. I went to Dodge City. Yeah. My teammates used to drive the Hutch to go party. We have practice the next day, so like a Friday night. Uh huh. They go after the game, come back like two, three in the morning, and I, I used to never go because uh, I was older. I went to junior college two years out of high school, so I was older. Okay, I'm like, yeah. man, this is my this is my chance. I can't blow it, yeah, yeah. you know, kind of thing. And so I never went out with these 17, 18 year olds. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm going on 20. You know, so to me that was oh, you know yeah. how it is oh, to yeah. be yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, 20. I was I was right there. We we were driving to Stillwater, talking about the Stillwater. Probably about 45, 40 minute ride. We go down there because you know Oklahoma State's down there. Right. Mm-hmm. But it was a drive, and we, we would make it though. We would make it and, and come back after and, and get up next morning and go to go to breakfast at six a.m. and yes, sir. get to class. So it was you know, it was an experience. So, um, but then like you know, as far as basketball goes, it was you know just the, the competition level was really really good at junior college. But you go you're going against teams where it's maybe like. You know, one or two, you know, killers. You know Did you I mean? automatically mesh with the game speed and no, with it all no, out like, there? In junior college? No, nah, when you got to Weber State. Oh, no. I was awful. I was awful. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I'm like, you know, a lot to you. We went from, like, you know, playing like Shout a, out to a, your honesty. A, <laughs> a, a freelance, four out, one in offense. You know, ran some sets, a couple sets to going to Weber where we, you know, I'm looking at 30, 40 sets on, on my coach's board. I'm like. What am I going to do with all this? And so, um, you know, first of all, you're trying to remember the plays. Then um, trying to remember the plays. But then you're trying to, you know, learn how to make plays out of the plays. And um, and so I, I struggled early on because it was just it was just a lot mentally. And you're trying to think think the game and, and play the game and make your reads and react. And so I struggled early on. And um, like, I, like I said before, my coach, when I went back there to work at Weber, my coaches were like, "Yeah, we 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 were about to cut you." And I was like, and like "No, no, we're serious. We we were going to send you home after your after your junior year because it was just I wasn't. I think they expected a whole lot more from me coming in with my accolades mm-hmm. and, and all the success I had in junior college. And I was I just wasn't ready. It took it took me some time to get there. Yeah, yeah. So, so when because when they when they signed a, a junior college player. Most of the time, they're expected to come in and produce right away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, have you ever been around anybody who was a junior college transfer and didn't produce? Did they get sent home? Because I've never seen that. Oh, absolutely. You, you've absolutely. seen it? Oh, yeah, yeah. If you come in, because, I mean, you only got two years. Yeah. Right. And they're, and they're expected for you to – well, in most cases, you only have two. If you redshirt, if you haven't redshirt, you can redshirt and get three. Um, or if you go to the Division One one year after going to JUCO – so you just go your freshman year, you go, then you can have three. 
But in most cases, you go two and you got two to play. And so they, they're not trying to waste their time. You got two years. You got to get you got to get busy right away. You got to get busy. And, um, and they, they you know they're not, they're not bringing a JUCO guy in to, to you know sit him or develop him. You're supposed to be some you know pretty much developed and ready to go. And so um, you know I've I've, I've had, I had teammates that ended up getting sent sent home after a year. I've seen you know as a coach I've seen kids get you know come from JUCO and then just not you know not mesh or not be not not be able to do what you think they're going to be able to do when you when they get there right and it's a cutthroat business you know people people's jobs are at at, at stake and uh, people's livelihood and their families and um, so I, I get it I get it that's the life we live in so Tom, you, how was your juco experience didn't you play juco where you yeah played um, I played juco um, I actually did one year of basketball one year of football trying to use that eligibility so I can try to have three when I did go d1 so oh, if I could possibly that's how I tried to, to play it. I did system. I did try and play it so my freshman year I played football at my junior college then that following year I went and played basketball so when I it transferred to Oklahoma I had three years still eligible. I still have three years of eligibility. But then you did what? <laughs> <laughs> I still got three years of eligibility. <laughs> waiting, to, waiting to use them. Yeah. It's over with now. It's <laughs> over with now. He was waiting to use them. Yeah, but then, I was trying to set it up for a good game plan. But, but then you yeah, didn't work you out. Right. Right. I tore my Achilles right before trying out for a team. And then after that, just didn't have the same career I felt like I should have had. So that's kind of how mine went. Yeah. So, but so you must have had a big drastic change from your junior year to your senior year at Weber State. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, 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 you know, I kind of went back to my roots, and I stayed there for the summer. Stayed there for the summer. I got a little job uh, at, a, at a Hilton Garden Hotel. Hey. I was, I was a server for like all the little banquets and stuff. Um, but it was cool. Hey, let's I, go. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool because I, I would get the, you know, and it was like good food. So. After we would get done with the banquet, there'd be a bunch of food left. So I'd be going home with good you food. Know, yeah, <laughs> right, you remind couple, me of how I did couple, in the cafeteria. Couple, couple boxes of food, and I'm talking like steak. Set and you chicken. up for the week. Yep, <laughs> I'm in there, bag, you know, loaded up. But um, so I did that. College life. Yeah, yeah. And then I uh, I worked out a whole bunch and lifted and, and stayed in the gym. And so I went from you know averaging you know like eight, eight nine points a game as a junior to. Um, 15, 16 as a, okay. as a senior and average like 20 something in, in conference. So big, big time change, but I, I just got comfortable with the system and, um, and the system fit me, you know, I, I, I made the, made the system fit me and I, I got a whole lot better and a lot more confident in, in myself and, and, um, and comfortable out there. So it, you know, it was a big change, big change. They, they, they didn't want, they didn't want to cut me after my senior year. <laughs> so now you coach here at Norman North. You also coach uh, Team Griffin. How does playing JUCO and playing at Weber, as well as overseas, affect the way you coach? Um, you know, it, it has a huge effect on it because you know I, I I feel like I know what it takes to get to those places. I know what it takes to be successful at those levels, and um, and so you know a lot of times you know when I'm trying to explain something to a kid or tell them why you can't do this or why you can't do that or why you need to do this or why you need to do that. It's like, you know, they look at me like I'm crazy or like I don't know what I'm talking about. And I'm like, <laughs> I know, I, I, I know a little so bit about it. because you are a player's coach, do you think you mesh with coaching these players better since you are and they listen to you better that way? Or do I, you think you still kind of have to battle that? kind of like back and forth with them because they feel like they ain't playing they right now. And yeah, they know. yeah, I think it's a little a little bit of both certain situations. You know, I, I'm not real big on like talking about what I did. Okay. Like, that, like, and that's why this sucks for you right now. Yeah. So you got to like, open I, up. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't, you know, I, I'm not, I don't throw it in their face, their face all the time or, um, or you know, talk about my glory days all the time because I feel like, you know, it's about them. Um, but, you know, some of the kids that have been around that, that got, that know or have heard or like you know looked it up. I think they they respect my opinion and, and they know okay. the success that I've had. Um, but sometimes it takes you know other people telling them like, hey, you know who this guy is like, um, you know what he did and stuff stuff like that. And, and and then they're like, oh, and some some of them don't really don't know. Mm. Um, but you know I, I try I try to be you know like, I, I kind of try to pride myself on being a players coach because I feel like 
I'm not that so not that far removed from where they were at, and I know what they're thinking. And we still I know get how they busy feel. on Sundays. Still, 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 still go out <laughs> there. You come get yourself. Yeah, still go out there and give a couple of buckets. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, and so you know, I, I can relate to them. I, I feel like I know what they're thinking, and I try to beat them to the point. So I, you want, you know, you're not going to do this. Don't, don't do this. I know you're about to do this, but don't do that because that's not going to work. Right. And so, um, you know, I think I think some of the guys, you know, appreciate it and and um. And or, you know, try to earn my respect out there because of what I've done, um, and, and I appreciate my you know my input because I you know I genuinely care about all the kids that I coach, right. all the kids I'm involved with, and you know, I, but I, but I'm hard on them because I I know what it takes. Gotta have it. But uh, I, don't I, I, know, I don't think they know, bro. I don't think they know because when I heard about you and I didn't know you, and I I was like, who is this dude? And my first time playing against you, I, you don't remember because it was like another. Instance to Hoop you, session. it was at cross point. Yeah, okay. but I remember because it was like this is the first time I'm meeting this dude. They he supposed to be the you know the, the killer guy. in Oklahoma. I remember one play I was guarding you, and somebody tried to throw you a backdoor pass, and I lunged at the back door. You may not remember this, and it was like a dive because it was so far I ended up falling. But I was like, he is not getting his back door on me. And I outside hand, you respect it. Outside hand deflection. And I got the turnover, and you stopped, and you looked at me like, "What this dude doing, diving in?" Like, I think I do. Remember. You know? He's like, "Bro, you stopped oh, yeah, playing and just looked at me on the floor." That. I think I do remember that. Like, what is this dude doing? I do remember this that. Is actually. A, this is this is pickup. Yeah, they're trying to make a statement. Out there. I was like. This this the dude I've been hearing about. Yeah. He is not about to kill me. Yeah. That's that was, the mentality. That was I had. he when he first came. And he that's felt when like I he first, had to make some type of statement. <laughs> bro, I had to. And so that's get back to my point. I don't think these kids really know. Like if those that go look it up, those that you know what I'm saying, check it. And those that even go watch you play, once they get it, they'll be like, Oh man, I'm gonna go super hard for this dude. I don't think they get it. So yeah. Maybe it's on me to make sure they get it. Yeah, like uh, because buy-in is key. Oh yeah, it, it it is, it is, and you know it's crazy. A couple of weeks ago, we had a guy come work out with our, our our summer team guys, and he was summer team being yeah team Griffin team Griffin, and um and he's working them out, and he's just talking about you know their their work ethic and the, the way they carry themselves, and he just stops and he's like, do you guys know who this guy is? He's like, do you know what he did? You know, he was on he was on the same team as Damon Lillard, this and that, MVP. And yeah, I like they probably a lot of the kids in the gym probably had no idea. Um, but it's just like for me, I'm like, if if I had the version of me coaching me when I was playing, I, I'd have been I'd have Oh been my god soaking up every opportunity. I'd have been asking a million questions, I'd have been, what do I need to do? Did I do this okay? Um and, and, and some some do. Um but, you you would have loved and hated me because I would have called you at midnight. That's, yeah, like, that's how we were. Word. Coach, how much sleep do you think <laughs> I, I need to yeah, get? Exactly. <laughs> uh, should I eat this apple? <laughs> apple. <laughs> I think their yeah, outlets yeah. are different now, though. They have so much around them with this sport, like the media, social media, and just everything that kind of they can look sure. to instead of having to come to one person. Like, Google stuff. When I was growing up, I didn't have all this social media stuff to watch other people or listen to other people. I had to talk to my coach because yeah. we didn't have all that. So yeah. I feel like now it's so many outlets for kids. They don't feel like they have to be just tuned into one, I guess, person all the time. That's the problem. Yeah, no, I agree with it. I agree with they it. They're getting coached by everybody now. Even coached by and some st- and different stuff's important. Oh. You know, different stuff's important now than it was then. And you look Speaking at of, you look at all the you know. I I get sick to my stomach where I I see somebody playing defense and they fall down and it's like, you know, everybody goes crazy and somebody misses the shot. It's like, okay, and you missed the <laughs> shot. It's like you know what 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 are we doing or or. I mean, or somebody dunks it in and they, you know, they get a technical foul right after the dunk. It's like, okay, well, the dunk was cool. Uh, you give Too much the same, NBA. Same two points. Um, so it's a, it's a different game and, and different things kind of are like highlight plays Everything now, now even like, at every level. Like, for me, it's like, yeah, if you play actual defense, you're probably at some point going to fall. Or get right, dunked, or right. Get it happens. Yeah, or get dunked it on. I've been dunked on. <laughs> you know, you're going to get dunked on. My knees touch the earth. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, it's like, are we are we gonna decide that we're not just not gonna try to play defense now, so we don't fall, or we're we gonna you know actually play defense and get some effort? And Look at scores now, though. Scores yeah, a lot, are a lot of, lot of all over hundred now, like yeah. a lot of points. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's an offensive game now. You can't touch on defense. I know when I was growing up, I was at least able to check oh, a little yeah, bit yeah. and stuff. Very but, very like, free. Yeah, you touch now, it's it's automatic foul. So I mean, 
game changing, I guess, oh, is what sure. it is. For sure. So for sure. I, I gotta rewind back to this everybody coaching everybody now because one of my pet peeves and you know I Kellen gave I talked about a little bit that I coached freshman. Kellen gave me my fr- first freshman opportunity, so I coached for him and his freshman uh team. And I volunteer whenever he'll let me. And whenever time allows, I volunteer and sit the bench and bring all the energy I can get, right? So boom, that's that. Coaching. Talking about everybody coaching everybody. How much do you hate coaches from the sideline while you're supposed to be coaching the game? Come on, as parents, parents or I mean, it friends could be parents, or anything. Anybody just yeah. not coaching staff. Yeah, yeah. That are coaching, telling people to shoot when they're not in the locker room. Mm-hmm. No, I, I just I think it's I think it's funny and kind of just simple to me like People just hearing people on the on, on the sidelines, or take him, take him, or, or do him, or shoot that. <laughs> it's like that ain't, that's not that's, that's not, not even not his game, do it. <laughs> right? Like, that's not his game. He's a post or he's a shooter. Like yeah, you know, I'm about to break somebody down, and so I just think it's kind of you know, like I, I tell some of our guys, I'm like, you know, y'all out there, y'all out here thinking it's 2K. It ain't. It's in, it's in yeah. 2K. Um, you ruined the game, low yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> Shooting 2K shots, trying to make 2K moves, and I'm like, this is not 2K. We, we're not going ISO. You ain't mashing no yeah, buttons yeah, in here, boy. Know. So, um, you know, I, I just think it's just kind of the society that we live in today. You got a lot of people that have a, have strong, strong opinions um, on the sidelines, whether it's parents or aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, cousins, um, grandparents. Uh, <laughs> so it's you know, it's just cra- You know, it's important that you got to try to. You know, tell your players how you're going to, you need to just tune that out while you're playing with us and listen to what we're telling you to do. Um, and, and, and then, and then try to do what we're telling you to do. And, you know, um, but it's, it's the world we live in. It's a crazy, you know, youth sports, high school sports is, is, has become a crazy world right now. Um, whether it's, you know, parents in the gym getting into it with each other or getting into it with the coaches. And Fights. It's, just, it's, it's nuts. It's nuts. So you're a um, so you have you you have a kid right? Yeah, I do. I Does do. she play? She used to play. She used to play. Um, hopefully we hopefully we get back to it. So she put it she, down. Put it down. Man. Oh, it down. I gotta go talk to her. <laughs> so when she do, do play though, do you catch yourself kind of coaching her from the sideline as a coach? Yeah. How do you feel? I uh like if Ooh. if I no no and I and I and I think about that when I when I would watch her play. I'm not I'm not very vocal in the stands. Okay. Now I will. Don't, there's a couple of things. Like I feel like I, I gotta, I gotta, you gotta some say. guidelines. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I got some guidelines as, as, as a coach because I also don't like when I go watch her. Like I, I just want to watch and enjoy watching my daughter. Like and, and that's that's what, when I go watch basketball. Like in general, like if I'm not coaching, I don't say anything. I'm not you know giving any suggestions about they should be doing this or that. So when I go watch my daughter play, I will only like get on to her about like her effort. Okay. Or attitude, like I'm Energy not out there, stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, like stuff that that she can that that she can change um, right there. Change there. some stuff that that you know um, everybody can do. Um, and, but I, I leave the you know the, the coaching for the coach at that time. I, I, I just try to stay behind stay doors. Out. Yeah, so you wait stay, behind doors. Yeah, okay. I sit usually okay. sit by myself and and um, just kind of be quiet and just watch. But if she you know if she's out there pouting, I get on to her. Okay. If she ain't got no energy, <laughs> I get on to her. And she. She picks it up, but um, you know, because I know how it is as a coach. You know, you got people screaming all this different stuff, and you and you, you talk about fourth grade little girls when you're hearing <laughs> ten different people tell you ten different things. Right, it's like you don't you don't know what to do. So um, I try to just make it to where it's just nine. I'm not one in the ten. I'm not, you know, it's nine right. nine people saying it, and and uh, just try to enjoy watching it. Yeah, I had to ask because, like, I'm a new father and I have a young son, so I'm just kind of trying to prepare myself oh, on how I'm going to act on these sidelines yeah, when they're playing a sport. Yeah, like, knowing, different. obviously, because I played and then just knowing what I just try and figure out how how that is, you know, yeah. having a coach and then, or you trying not to really be too vocal while your kid is playing type yeah. of deal. So, have you ever seen Coach Neil? Have you ever seen Mike Neil coach, uh, watch his sons co- playing another sport where he's not the coach? <laughs> I have not. I caught it one time, and it was by accident. So Mike Neal is going to be our next guest. Hopefully, if, you know, everything works out. That's our next guest, right? I'm assuming he probably is very quiet. So <laughs> <laughs> I watch it. Mike he's watching his quiet. son play uh, uh, baseball, right? Uh-huh. I, 
I don't know if it was both of them or one of them, whatever. So I'm calling him. I see him. I'm, I see him from behind. Now. I'm, call, I'm like, Mike, Mike, Mike. So finally, I'm trying to walk around and see what is, like, how is Mike Neal not here? Well, he he's got on me. headphones, and he's sitting away from everybody. So finally, I see, I'm like, Mike, man, I'm trying to get a, you know, I'm trying to holler at you. He was like, man, this is how I keep my sanity. Yeah, oh, yeah. And yeah. not coach from the side and stay tuned in and not get to hear what other people are yeah, saying about oh, yeah. the game. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to do That's that. A <laughs> That's a great idea because it, it, it's true, like, I don't even like sitting, and this is, I mean, I just, when I go to a game, regardless of if it's like the girls game before me or if it's a, I try to sit by myself because I just, I don't even like hearing, you know, the the stuff that's being said, you know, in the stands. And, and I, But, but at, once you become a parent, you, you, you have a little bit more of like a um, understanding for, you know, how parents may be watching their kids mm-hmm. or, um, and so it's, you know, you, you understand. And as a coach, you know, it helps you understand more. Like, I get it. That's their daughter. That's their <laughs> son. Like, I understand why they're mad he's not playing. Or I understand that he's not getting a shot. Or, you know, or if somebody just t- tackled the kid. Like, I get it. That's your baby. Um, so, yeah, you know what I mean? I, I understand because, you know, it, when you become a parent, you be like, okay, yeah, I'd be the same way. And so it, it, it helps me deal with, with uh, situations and, and understand, you know, where people are coming from being a parent now. But, um, you know, watch, watching watching them, I just – I try to be quiet. That's a great idea, having music. That's, that's, I, I would, <laughs> that's a great idea because there's just so much. There's so much. There's so much, man. Know. You're hearing somebody. They might say, what is that kid doing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, what yeah. are you talking it's, about? It's crazy. Yeah, what are you that's talking my, about? That's mine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Me. I'm Boy, telling you. It, it I'm, I got a rude there. awakening. It's it emotional up there. Mine is six. And so he's on his way. On yeah, his way. You yeah, know, yeah. so, yeah. man, that's what's up, man. So let's talk about Peach Jam for a minute, right? You touched a little bit about – you talked a little bit about uh, Team Griffin. First of all, what is Peach Jam? Because that's new to me. I ain't know about Peach Jam until probably when you want it. So yeah, yeah. talk to me about it. Talk to us. Okay, so um, the the Nike EYBL circuit is you know, the biggest, most um, – Prestigious, prestigious, uh, highest level of summer basketball in the country or in the, in the world, really. What are some um, of the other ones? Uh, well, there's, there's there's shoe brands. There's Nike, there's Adidas, there's Under Armour. Oh, okay. There's a couple. There's like Prep Hoops is becoming kind of a big one, um, which isn't a, a shoe brand. It's just a company that has a big circuit nationally. But so Nike's like the you know the the Super Bowl of summer basketball. Um, I believe this this past PGM was the 20th, but it's always in South Augusta. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's, it's huge. So it's the championship of the, the, the Nike UIBL. So like each year, for example, like this year, there's, there's three sessions. Um, usually there, there's four, but so each session you go to, you play four games and they keep, obviously they keep track of your record. And then the top, um, 32 make, sorry, the top 16 make PCM or top 32 make PCM. Different, different uh, age many, groups. How many Nike different. teams are there usually? You said um, top 32. Yeah, it, it can go from like 40. Um, at one point it was 40. Now it's 32. 32. So, um, yeah. So you it's would not, think not, there's more than that. Well, I mean, it's it's an elite it's an elite deal. So um, so then you can't make it on the circuit every year? There's, I mean, you can, get, you can get kicked off for sure. Yeah, you can get you can get your for real? <laughs> your privileges revoked. Oh yeah. But it's only so it's on a year by year basis. Um. Well, yeah. So like for example, like our seventeens, uh, Team Griffin seventeens were not on the Peach Jam last year, or not on we're not on the EYBL last year because they um because you, you it, it goes off the success. So our fifteens and our sixteens were on the Peach Jam, and I'm sorry, we're on the EYBL. And in order for us to get our 17s back on the EYBL, we had to make the Peach Jam, right? And so we qualified for the Peach Jam, and we kind of feel like, okay, yeah, we're, 17s are back on, and we get there. And we, I, I think you, I think either myself or Ta- maybe Taylor said something to the Nike guy, and he's like, nah, it, it, y'all aren't, it's not a done deal yet. Y'all aren't in yet. Y'all got to do, you know, still take care of business here. And we're like, what? And so um, – so then we kind of we go to the Peach Jam and it's same same um, format where you play, you're in a pool, you play your pool play and you got to make it out of your pool, and so we end up, and our pool is Mocan, who is like you know they won the Peach Jam, um, and then PSA Cardinals, who is a 
the team that Cole Anthony played for, program team that Cole Anthony played for out gotcha. of New York, and then Pro Skills out of Texas. So really, really tough pool. Oh, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And we end up we end up winning our pool, which was big time. Um, and so then we're like, all right, are we, are we good now? And they're like, no. Nah, so Paul Anthony was playing. No, nah, he was 17. He was 17. Yeah, he was. A, yeah. But you won 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is the year after Cole Anthony. So Cole Anthony was at Oak Hill last year. Okay. So, um, so then, then, so then we went our win our pool, uh, win the Elite Eight game, go to the Final Four. I'm like, yeah, we good? I'm like, no, nah, not yet. Win the Final Dang. Four. Game. Yeah. So. So basically, we we basically had to do what we did, win the whole thing to get back, get our Just whole program get back, back on. on. So, um, so it ended up working out, but so it's 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 an elite level. Um, I mean, so here turkeys. I am thinking, not to cut you off. Here I am thinking because it's Team Griffin, Blake Griffin's team. You're on this NBA players team, I should say. Yep. That you're on the circuit automatically. Automatically, you're on EY, and it's not like that. No, yeah, it's you know they they. They make it an elite level deal where you've got to. There's, you know, there's qualifications Produce. that you have to do, um, you know, off the court and even stuff off the court. You know, it, it's got to be a, you know, off a business and organization, um, you know, from top to bottom as far as you know, paperwork and and extra extra stuff, testing and um, academic academics, the whole deal. Oh, it, it's it's pretty big time. It, it's Not like really. a, it's almost like you 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 have a college program. Um, you know, in, in the summer with the, with the, the, as much as we do for our kids. But if you kids make it to PGM, they probably going to most likely get looks. I mean, playing on the EYBL in general, you're going to get looks because you go to those tournaments during those live periods, which is when the college coaches are able to come and watch. And see. Okay. It's just, you know, the, around the court, it's full of, of coaches. And um, so it's it, it, it's crazy. It's all the opportunity in the world. And it only takes – it's like, like that. You go in the game and you have a couple of good plays and – you, you may leave with an offer. It's like, like for example, last summer uh, we went to our first Nike event in Arkansas, and one of our kids now, his name is Jackson Robinson, um, six, seven kid out of Ada, he goes. Nice. And we had, we played the first night we, we played in the showcase game against the uh, against Woods Elite, who was on the UIBL circuit. They're the Arkansas team in, in, in the UIBL. And, um, and Jackson has no Division one offers. He's kind of, you know, everybody's kind of somewhat looking at him a little bit. But uh, in the game, it wasn't a live period. So, um, but the Nike UIBL has this this uh, video for this video system called uh, Baller TV that they stream the games on. Oh, so the okay. college coaches can watch the games and not be there and not get in trouble. And so Jackson reels off. We ain't have all this growing no, up. Y'all. No, no, we didn't have all right, this growing right, up, no. y'all. <laughs> so Jackson goes and he has eight threes in the game. And I get done the game, my phone's ringing. It's Oklahoma, okay. Oklahoma State, okay. TCU, offer. All, he so within. So our game was probably like seven, probably from like nine to eleven. Jackson had four division, high major division one offers. Oh, offer one. Yeah, so that was just, really gonna be my next question. Like with that last circuit, your PGM team, how many of your kids like really kind of excelled past where yeah. you were like, oh, like I knew he was good, but then PGM came, you like, oh yeah, he balling. Like how many of your kids you feel like kind of actually got into themselves? Yeah, so. PGM? Yeah, um, I mean, a lot of our guys have were a big part of us winning and being successful there because it was you know high level competition. And you carried how some much games. on the roster? We had nine guys. We right. had nine guys in our roster. So, That's a rotation. <laughs> yeah, so some games, you know, some some people made some big plays and stepped up. Like I told them, I was like everybody had a part. Um, whether it was you know one play, like for example, one of our kids off the bench came in the game at the end of a half and got a big steal, dove on the floor for a loose ball. Threw it ahead for a dunk, boom! Mm-hmm. All, all the mm-hmm. momentum, all the momentum, go up, go up by two at halftime, um, stuff like that. So, but um, you know, our, our guys, our we got five guys right now that are in the top one hundred and fifty in the country. In the country, all off so, Peace Jam. Well, I mean, or from, before from, Peace Jam, you know, they was some, already some having this were ranked um, early on. I th- so, I think two of our guys were ranked before. We started with this group. Okay. KJ Adams and Trey Alexander. Oh yeah, yeah. Were both ranked, and then um, Damian Collins, who was he, he's like 180 pounds, six nine, skinny, super skinny, wears goggles. Ah, um, yes. Skinny, skinny, skinny. I did see him getting um, busy on the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's a hilarious, goofy kid. I love him to death. Um, he went from like you know, I don't think he was ranked at all. If he was ranked, he was very, very low. 
in the, like one ranking a couple weeks ago. He was 18th in the country. Oh man! Oh my goodness! So man. Damian and then Bijan Cortez from Kingfisher, mm-hmm. who's always kind of been you know a silent. He just killer. signed to OU. Didn't he committed to Oklahoma nice guard. last week. Nice um, little guard. You know, he, you look at Bijan, and then I, I think people still do it. They look at Bijan and like this kid can't play, and then. Boom, just dunked I ain't gonna somebody. lie, that's how I was <laughs> until you know, I seen them videos. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he committed to Oklahoma, but he had he had a bunch of offers and and interest from. Um, I mean, you talking about these kids nowadays have like 20, 30 Division one offers like every day. In school in the country is offering them, it's, and I'm I'm happy for them. I'm like, you know, it, I'm like, happy, you know, but you're jealous. But I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, like why 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 can't we have that? So it's different. But they got a lot of YouTube opportunities. YouTube was barely and, launching when I. Yeah, oh yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> they got YouTube true. was barely true. launching they when have we was it coming yeah. up. They have Video it good there. right now. They yep. have it great. So, um, so yeah, they, they've gotten a ton of opportunities, and even and that's the thing. Like I said, even guys that came off the bench and maybe they didn't play as much as other guys, um, they got they got a lot of looks because you know. It's, so as a whole, so they play. all just kind of meshed together and all kind of came. Oh, for sure. Like excelled yeah, all yeah. as a whole. We had okay. we had to. That was that was our only chance. I told our guys like if we don't play together, like we're not gonna have a chance. We got to defend. We got to make the extra pass and make the right plays, and um, and we'll have a chance. And it's you know those top five guys that rank nationally, you know, they can go play on any other team and, and try to be the guy. But, you know, they've all kind of accepted, you know, working together. To, together. Yeah, to, and, and giving up a little bit of their own, you know. You could definitely tell individual. they mesh. They look yeah. like they were really having they fun together. And they, they had fun, job. man. Yeah, they, they looked, like, it looked like, fun, for real. <laughs> yeah. From yeah. a distance, it looked like they really liked each other. Yeah. And that that's a testament to the coaching, for real, because yeah. you got to get the right pieces, man. And it looks like you did that. So, yeah. shout out to you, man. So, we'll, let's talk a little bit about – you know, so you coach for an NBA player. You've played with an NBA player in Damian Lillard in college. So what's it like just being around those caliber players? And just from me playing against you, watching you, I know you had the talent to play in the NBA. You know, what's it like not having made to the NBA and being around those guys at the same time? Yeah, Um Early on, like when I first stopped playing professionally, uh, I, I and I and I, I got into coaching. I I wouldn't go. I, I didn't go to any any NBA games or on purpose. I, I just yeah, it was hard for me to watch. Yeah, you know I mean, I didn't go to any NBA games. Uh, I didn't even really watch a whole bunch of NBA, um, and be, just because you know it, it was hard for me to watch. People would ask, well, "Who's your Who's your team?" I'm like, I don't have one. Like, who's your favorite player? I don't have one either. You know, yeah. like I, I, you know, playing against those guys and. And being able to, you know, kind of hold your own against some of those guys, it's like, no, you know, I pick me, you know what I mean? Right, you know, right, that competitive right. Side and, and they look at you yeah, like, you. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so uh, early on it was, you know, I, I was kind of, because it was, you know, it was, it was tough, give, you know, not playing anymore. Cause that's something that you've done Passion. all your life. Your identity. You love it. You know, it's, right. you wake up every day, you know, you're, you're used to doing it. Uh, so it took me some time. Uh, and then, you know, playing with, with, with a guy on, on my team. Um, that is you know, killing in the NBA right now. Um, Fifty balls yeah, left yeah. and right. Yeah, super, super, uh, super happy for him. And but when you first ran him. into him, did you see that in him already? Like, because I mean, you know, come people come to the team, you already always kind of get your reception on somebody. Yeah. You look like, all right, is this somebody who's gonna be able to hang with me, yeah. help with me, or stuff like that? Like, what was your thoughts when you first kind of ran into yeah. this guy? When I, I, I always say this, when when Dame first came on his visit and I saw him, I was like, I mean, he, he's got a chance to. To be really good, he, he got a chance to make it to the NBA because okay. he was he was skilled. He had that that mentality. I mean, he was, he a big, was special, he was a big cause... guard. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I I thought he had a chance to, to be successful. Now, never in a million years, but I thought that he was doing what he's doing now. <laughs> what he's doing right now is crazy. Um, but you know, I, I, even at, at first, a little bit with his success, it was hard for me to watch because you're talking about, you know, he was kind of my counterpart. You know, when I was at, at Weaver and. Um, but, you know, he was we, your protege. We, yeah, we played, <laughs> we, we played really well together. He helped me in a lot of ways. I helped him in a lot of ways getting going as a freshman. Uh, I was the MVP that year. He was the freshman of the year. But um, that's tough. So, so you know, that's tough. Seeing it all, and it was a little hard at first. But now, I mean, I have no issues. You know, supporting him. Right. Going and watching him play. And uh, I'm shout out Dame him. Lillard. Come on the show, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna tell go. Kellen to call you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, it's 
being around those guys now, you know, I I I, I enjoy hearing the stories. I enjoy get, those two in particular, Blake and and and, and Dane, because they both haven't changed. They, they haven't. Did changed. you know they Blake were, before? I played against Blake. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I played against Taylor. Um, and, and just seeing Blake kind of growing up and from him being an OU. But you didn't and, actually know Blake. I knew. Yeah, I, I knew Blake a little bit. Um, okay. not not as well as I obviously know Dane, but I knew him a little bit from being at OU and um being with t- around Taylor a little bit. So. Um, What'd you do at OU? I was a GA at OU. Okay, yeah. so that's kind of how you got your coaching start. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was my sec- that was my second job. I, my first job was at Emporia State in Kansas as a, as an assistant. You said where state? Emporia. 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 Okay, I heard it. Emporia. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but that that I mean, I, like I said, that, that's the best thing about those two guys is that they are they're still very very much the same. They they're not they're not going big time you. They they're not going to you know act like they don't know you. They're both really really genuine and. And um, the money, the money, and the fame hasn't changed in one bit. That's what's up. What's up? Yeah. So it's cool. So man, just simple question um, for all the short guys out there. That's kind of you know sometimes second guessing themselves or don't feel like they can make it. You got any kind of good supporting words for them just to keep them going and keep on working hard so they can accomplish some things in this sport? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, especially in, in, in the game today, there is no, there's like no boundaries for like your size given there's there's some guys some teams and you see the guys that go to the nba they want long athletic tall but the way the game is today you know you see so many guys that are that are having success that are smaller but you know you but you just gotta you gotta be right you gotta be able to shoot that thing you gotta be able to handle it um you know you gotta be able to make some plays um but you know i i i had always had the mentality that nobody was gonna be able to tell me that i can't do something that i want to do you know what I mean, like, if you want to do it bad enough, make it happen. Make it happen. Put in the work. Figure out what you need to do to to, to get that. Figure out what you need to do to get to where you want to be. Um, and, and and then once you figure it out, you gotta go do it. You gotta go do it. And and you know, one of my mentors told me, he's like, once you figure out, you know, the recipe for success and what you what you do to to, to be successful, and you do it, then you gotta do it again and again and again and again. Um, and then you gotta figure out, okay, well, now now what's next? What I got? What I got? What I gotta do now? I, I, I did good at this or I perfected this and now I need to keep, you know, fine tuning this, but now what do I, I need to add something to that. Yeah. And so, um, you always want to be able to add stuff to your game and, and, and just, just continue to work on things that, that you do well, but also add stuff to fine that. Fine tuning. Yep. Yep. So you fine tuned it all the way to overseas. So let's talk about that a little bit. Cause I think people's ideals of overseas are distorted. Perception. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I'm, I think I'm a decent basketball player, and but I took a – I had no idea, right? I was clueless. You know, I didn't have some opportunities some other people had. I kind of willed myself to college, yeah. you know, multiple levels. Um, highest I got in college was D2, but I, I willed myself to that position because I went – I started late, you know. Yeah, yeah. Eighth grade is when I started playing basketball. So I willed myself all the way to college and willed myself to even where I got a chance to be considered to play you know, in Puerto Rico, but boy, when I got there, like one of my, one of my jobs, I made 3,500, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And so at first it was like, for, oh, like, like a month, I made 3,500. It was like a three weeks span for the playoffs. Oh, so okay. I went to Asia, I went to Bangladesh, made 3,500 just for the, for the, uh, for the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I went with Jerome James, you know who Jerome James is? Played for the Seattle Supersonics, New York Knicks, 7-2. Center. I think I do know what you're talking about. He yeah. went he went to uh Bangladesh with me and some other dude and they gave him I'm not counting his probably, money or anything. Like ten. No, they gave this dude like thirty oh, I was gonna say, for yeah. three weeks. Yeah. Here I am. Yeah. I'm just happy I got thirty five hundred. Yeah. The other dude, Cheyenne, they gave him like nine. Mm-hmm. And he played at Clemson or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. D one NBA the guy who played D2 was hurt most of the time. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But so I had that experience. I was happy I got the experience, but I was like, man, you know, I hear overseas, overseas, it's not, that's not money, you know, right? So then after that, it took a while, but I got the opportunity to go to Puerto Rico. And at first I had to buy my flight, buy my rental car, buy my apartment, buy, sorry, uh, my hotel. And I had to get there. And they were like, every day you don't bring it, we getting rid of you. Uh-huh. Every day. That's that's how the translation was from my translator because 
you know, I had the, the dude who was our coach was named Paco, and he was the Puerto Rican national coach. So however he said it, ruthless as it was, that's how I got translated to mm-hmm. me. Every day you don't bring it, you're getting sent home. And I'm on my own dime at first, so that whole week goes by. Then they finally pick up everything, and I'm making 200 a month. I mean 200 a week, right? So that's 800 a month. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, all of this, and, you know, I went from 3500 which wasn't nothing. Now I'm making 800 a week. Uh, 200 a week, which ain't nothing. So then I start wrapping my head around, like, there's levels to this overseas thing that everybody, you know, tries to get to. If you can't make it to the NBA, try to get overseas, Mm -hmm. right? So talk to us a little bit about the the levels of overseas, because you got to play at a higher level than me, which is why I knew your name before I met you, you know what I'm saying? So talk to to us a little bit about that. Um, Yeah, no, overseas, especially today, um, it's very, very different than it was then. Uh, I, I I was when when I came out of college, I was in a weird time because the um it's my first year or my second year, I think it was my second year was when the NBA was on that lockout. Oh, and so so everybody, everybody was locked out. All these NBA dudes are going over and, and making money while they can't play That's in the NBA. That's a weird time for so, real. Yeah, yeah, so that that kind of affected things um, a little bit later on. But like today, you know, you see so you know, I see some of the guys. I mean, you, you could go overseas and you could be playing in the you know the the German YMCA league you know what I mean and not not making any money um, you know it's just a matter of you know if you if you but you say you're overseas and, you, and people think you're getting um, busy yeah yeah if you played <laughs> and you know you could find somewhere to go over there and play um, but uh, you know it's there there's levels like you said there's levels to it um, you know when, when I came out of college I was you know I had some accolades. Um, Played D one. I went along, along, you know, with with my 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 stats and my numbers and the level that I played at. So, my first, and it was a crazy experience. My, my first. Uh, if you don't mind, give us the numbers. If you don't mind. So my first offer sheet was with a team named Bayern Munich, which is like the big soccer club in Germany, um, and and they offered me fifty five hundred a month, and but when, when you, in in most situations, um, they give you a car, they give you, they pay for your apartment, they pay for your. Um, your phone and all that stuff. So um, before I even l- left, so they, they gave me the deal. I signed the contract. Um, and then you know, this is the story that I was told is that they have they had a board that had to, you know, approve, uh, approve the, the signing. And so the board didn't deny the, my signing. And so um, so before I even like left them to do that, it was like that back to square one. So, um, so I ended up taking a deal in in, in, a, in a different. So that was um, Pro A Germany, and then I got a deal in another pro, with another Pro A team in Germany called uh, ETB Wambau Baskets. Um, now, is this is this considered Euro League or no? No, this is this is so this is the second league in Germany. So Euro League is the BBL um, in Germany, which is the, the league above. So right. it was like it was probably like. You know, 18 teams in the in the uh, in Pro A, and there's probably really like close to 18 in in the uh, BBL. Okay. And so, but but it, like in there, like if you win, you can move up. And like so, like the top typically top two teams in like Pro A would move up to BBL, and the bottom two teams in BBL uh, okay. would move down to Pro A. For those who don't know, the BBL is. That year, I don't know what I think it was 2013. That year, 2K came out with the Euro League oh. <laughs> and put it on 2K. You might, you don't know about that. Uh-huh. They put all them teams on 2K one year, uh-huh. and so that's what. Anyways, that's what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. So and, it, and it's a good league. Like, I mean, I remember playing against, um, like, in the preseason over there, we would play against the the BBL team, and I was playing against uh, like Casey Jacobson. Uh, he played at Stanford, playing the NBA for a long time. Uh, uh, what was the other kid's guy's name? Um, point guard from that was at Arizona playing the NBA for a while. I forgot his name. Gardner was his last name. So it's you know it's it's competitive. But so I so going back, I so I went to ETB Wambau Baskets and I took a uh, like it was late. It was late, so I took a contract um, for thirty five hundred a month, car. And it was I mean it was cool. I got like a little BMW uh, Mercedes Bug, little little tiny car. Yeah. <laughs> um, bug. My, I had an apartment. Um, that, and and that, all that stuff's paid for. So if you you know you look at the finances, your living, your car, that's money in your pocket too. Right, right. All of it's tax free. So um, yeah, flight was taken care. Flights of. Flights are taken care of. Um, and you always you know 
my agent always told me you, you want to work in your flights and your deal. So um, over there and back, and then I also got a flight for Christmas to come home. And, and that the, was and, in your deal. In the deal too. Oh, yeah. that's so, love. Wow. So and then what they do is a lot of places they give you like a meal plan, so that they, like certain restaurants you can go to and just eat right. for free. Mm-hmm. So I had that too. Um, so I but but I, I get over there and and I hated it right away. Hated it. Um, just I was just I was young and and in a place where you, you nobody's talking English and um, and then co- they send you with no translator. No, no, my coach was was Serbian, so he's talking a different language and um, so it, it was tough. It was tough and we, and then just as far as like the practices, you practice two three times a day. Easy. Go to training camp, you practice two times a day, and then you got games. Um, so I, I just wasn't used to it at all. And then you talk about the, the system that I was playing in. I went from, hey, pass it, go screen down, come off a of stagger, don't get it off a baseline double, is to, you know, point guard, here's a ball screen, go make a play. Go score. Right. <laughs> and so um, I, and then, so I, I, I struggle with it. You know, I, I struggle with, with uh, you know, being the main playmaker, having the ball in my hand, because I just, I hadn't done it. Um, so you know, since I, basically high school, would you say? Not any really. I mean, high school, I could just go buy my guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you know, when you when you get up to these next these other levels, um, you know, you got a guy in front of you that you know it's tough to get by, and you got the, the help, and obviously bigger, tall guys mm, can help. And so a lot, a lot of the stuff was ball screen oriented, and, and and I struggled with it. You know, if I came off a ball screen, I, just the, the decision making. You know, I didn't really make great decisions off of it, and, and God forbid somebody dropped me, I was just giving it to him at that point. So. Um, struggled a little bit, and it was to the point to where, like, I was playing these games, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm sucking right now. I'm doing terrible. I hope I don't get – and I've heard all the stories about people getting sent home and your contracts don't mean anything. They'll send you home. So I'm, like, panicking. And, and obviously, I, I think that probably went into me not playing very well, too. Right. Um, but so we That's have, why I didn't enjoy Puerto Rico because I feared you to sit it, home. I never went to the beach in Puerto Rico. You are playing for your job every day. Like, literally. Um, it, it's rare that, I mean, like they'll, they'll send you home. And, and so, at the time, my son was like six, seven months. So I'm like, if I don't get this job, yeah, gotta, boy, I'm yeah, away yeah. from my oh, yeah. family, yeah. no yeah. money, all that. So. Yeah, so um, I'll never forget that we played a game at home, and it was like my second or third game in a row that I was just struggling. Couldn't put the ball in the basket. Um, missed a couple open shots, and um, and the coach takes me out uh, like early in the third quarter, and he's playing like this young this young kid like a, he's like one of the kids that played on the, the like our like farm team and this team as well. Like but, the local team. Yeah, but he wasn't supposed to be playing on this team. Obviously, I was supposed to be playing, and um, and uh, and he the coach yeah, the, the local coach was supposed to be trash. Yeah, so <laughs> the coach let him. Like close game, went with him the rest of the way. Game goes into overtime, still goes with him. Woo wee! So I'm sitting over there, I'm like, man, dang. So I'm out. Yep. So after, <laughs> after the game, I'm I'm trip freaking out, you know. Um, and we go to uh, we go to eat, we go to the, the, the restaurant where they, they feed us or whatever. And I look down on my phone, I see it's the the owner calling me, and I'm like, shoot. And the team owner. Yeah, team yeah, owner. Yeah, because they real hands-on over there. And uh, and I answer, and he's like, hey, um, we need to meet with you in the morning. And I'm like, what's I'm like, what's, what's wrong? What's, I mean, are y'all sending me home? He's like, let's just meet in the morning. He wouldn't, wouldn't give me an answer. Yeah. So I'm freaking out. Oh, I leave. I didn't, I didn't even you eat. You didn't get no sleep. I didn't eat. I, I, I got in my car. I went back to the, pl- to, the, to the apartment. Barely slept all night. Called my parents. Told them what was going on. They're like, oh, no. They probably just want you. Yeah, everything's fine. So I. I'm I'm at the at the offices probably like an hour early. They're not even ready yet for me, so I wait. They call me in and they basically were like, "Hey, we're gonna cut you. Um, you can't since basically like saying we we can abide by your contract and keep you here, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put you on our farm team, which they they know an American's not gonna go do that. Exactly. So we'll put you on our farm team and you can do that, and um, we're gonna bring somebody else in. I'm like, so I tell them call my agent. He's like, that's fine. They're not supposed to do that, whatever. But we'll we'll find something else for you. So, um, so then, my flight wasn't for like a week, and so I'm sitting in, in my apartment every day watching my my teammate go to practice or whatever. Um, and the crazy thing is, like when I got there, they were another guy was sending they were sending another guy home. So I knew it was a 
a sketchy situation cut going in. Situation. Uh, in cutthroat, yeah. So I'm in my apartment, and my door rings, my doorbell rings, and um, it's this it's this guy that played. Uh, his name is Tyler Kepke, and me and Tyler Kepke hated each other. Um, Tyler Kepke was the point guard at Utah, and that was like our rival school. And, oh and, yeah, and Weber. Yeah. And so, um, the Weber's in yeah, Utah. So, like, we we like we would be, we would play pickup against. Is each that other who during, replaced you? Yes. Oh so was, way. Like, we, we would play pickup during the summers. I mean, we were probably about gotten fights, talking, didn't like each other. So like when he, he I was like, wow, what are the odds? But we were cool. Like I talked to him. We were cool. Like, we were both just competitors. He conspired um, against you. <laughs> I had, I'm like, too much of a coincidence. I'm convinced. I don't yeah. believe in coincidence. Yeah. So, um, so he came in. We kind of talked and everything. And crazy thing is that he ended up finishing the year there. Tyler Kepke, yeah. I don't like you, bro. I don't know you. <laughs> I don't yeah. know you, man. Yeah. But. No, but he was cool, and he, but he, you know, it, it fit him because he could shoot it. He was really, really good off ball screens. The system fit him yeah. better, yeah. and you know, he, he, he was more accustomed to doing that stuff already so it worked out so i went home um and basically just waited for wait till the next season uh my daughter my daughter was born so it was good to be, be able to be back home with her um and i got a job i took a job at finish line selling shoes and um so i get i'm working there but i'm i'm at the same, same point i am um, i'm working my butt off still like you know just one that second chance so I, I got in the gym and I just started working on like my individual game and you know making plays for myself and and, and scoring <laughs> off the ball screens. That's tight because when I first met you, all you wanted was a ball screen. Yeah. So the next <laughs> six down, I, got, I got it together. The next six down, together. all you wanted was a ball yeah. screen. But it was like that was my first time ever getting cut in my entire life. And so when I went home the first couple of weeks, I, I don't think I like left my house for like two weeks. When I got cut okay. from Puerto Rico, it was the first time in eleven years I got cut, and I don't think I hooped for the next two months. Yeah, I didn't. I don't think I did anything. I I, I watched like and it was, I watched like six seasons of uh, y'all ever watched the show Twenty Four? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they got like twelve seasons. I I watched like I I got caught up. Yeah. I got caught up. <laughs> uh, in, in that in that time span where I was in depression, so um. So yeah, no, no. so how'd you climb out of that depression, man? Cause you just touched you just touched on something. Man, tough. Cause man, like training is how I training, you know, working out kids and you know, that's how I climbed out of my 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 funk of not playing basketball anymore. Yeah. Pick up one doing it. Yeah. Cause you're like, I'm still killing these dudes, I still deserve a shot, but you're not gonna get one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean I wasn't at the time anyways. I had knee surgery. Um so a team in, 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 in Italy offered me a job, right? I played two years in a semi-pro league. Then after that, this was after, this was after Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico cut me. I don't hoop for two months. And then I'm like, okay, I'm ready to get back on the horse. So then I get back on the horse. You know, I played a semi-pro team for two years. Then a team in Italy wants me. Third league. You know, they got like five or six leagues in Italy. Or some, it ain't like some go to like. The A, B, C, D, E, anyways. Yeah, yeah. So they want me, but they want me to get my own flight. You know, not a chance. Not a chance I'm getting my own flight because I had people, I, I got my own flight to Puerto Rico and hotel and all that. And I'm not working because I'm working on my game. So my family had to do that. So I wasn't going to put my family through that yeah, again. Yeah, right? yeah. So I'm like, not a chance. And shortly after, I get knee surgery. Tom, you remember? I got knee surgery. I, 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 I hyperextended my knee, kept playing on it, didn't know. Six oh, months so later. Still killing on a I'm, I own up, bro, like, until it swole up. It didn't even hurt. It just was sw just I couldn't move it. It was just yeah. so swole. And then I was supposed to go to uh, Middle East somewhere. But then I'm like, I can't take this contract. I got to have knee surgery. So then, boom, I recover from it. I'm trying to hoop. I'm still killing. It's just not, you know. It's not sitting well until I started training kids and then eventually coaching after that. That's what took me out of mind, right? Yeah, yeah. So how would you get out of your depression? Man, I, I, I just think it, it, took, it just took time for me. Um, and, and, you know, and also that, that, that fire in my gut to, to knowing, knowing that I failed. I'm like, should I fail for the first time? Like, um, so it, it took me some time, but, you know, I, after – after you know, kind of taking my time with it, I was able to get back in the gym, and and, and I still had that motivation because I, you know, right back to you know my roots, wanting to prove people wrong, and 
and you know, not you know, not accepting somebody telling me I can't do something. And I and I knew I, I knew I could do it. I, I, I was eager for another shot at it, uh, but I also knew that you know it might not come. So I you know, like I said, I worked the finish line, got promoted to. And they asked me to be a manager and training. So basically, like training you to like run your own store. I'm like. So the more you take these be, these yeah, promotions, but the further still, away you get away from yeah, the game. I was still in there grinding, you know, getting, getting playing, pick up, and working out, and um, and so then the lockout comes up. So I'm like, all right, this really may not happen. Um, and so, but then I got I got a call um, from from a team in Sweden that wanted me to go play, and it was uh this this contract was like for like thirty five hundred a month, car, apartment, everything, um, reputable team in the league it was actually the team magic johnson like bought the team for a few years they were called m7 um uh and then in that league scotty pippen went and played in the league when he retired oh, i didn't um, know that yep so he, he played in the league so once he left portland he went overseas yeah yeah yep, played play for the sons of all dragons mm -hmm. one of my teammates played with him so him oh, um and, and like in, in the league when I was playing over there, uh, George Gervin's son played in the league. What? And it was, Sweet, yeah, it was popping. Like tough league, right? It was tough. It was a good league. Um, and then they they had this this point guard that was um that was young, that was like a lot it was supposed to be like a lottery pick coming out of like he was he was like six foot, little guard. Um, and his name was Rudy Rudy Bemba, and he was he was a black, like black guy, but I mean could have bounce, could shoot it quick, strong. Play on, he was like playing on their national team as like as, at, at a young age, um, so it was it was loaded loaded league, um, and so I went over there and, but I, I was ready I was ready I had I had that mindset where I, I'm 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 going out here to kill somebody you know I, I'm telling you out there Mamba <laughs> mentality I'm telling you from, from from jump so we go over there that's when that's probably that time frame you got so big because when I first met you. You walked around. You wanted people to know your chest was like. Oh yeah, yeah. Was, <laughs> He's I, like, oh I, yeah. I was one seventy five. I was one seventy five. And but and, what uh, were you before that? Before that summer, when you put in all that work? Oh no, I, I, I was still. I was big. I was big in college. I, I was about the same. Okay. Between, one, between like one sixty five, one seventy five. I met you. You you walk like you was heavy. Boy. Yeah, you I was. Strong. I was strong upper body, but you know, wasn't nobody gonna post me up. That's for sure. That's what it was. Um, okay. But. Uh, so I went over there. I went, we went to a training camp, right to like some ex exhibition games. But we played the exhibition games in uh, what was that? What was that uh, country called? I can't think of the name. I can't think of the name right now. But we go, we go play some exhibition games in another country, and um, and from jump, I'm I'm literally playing every minute, but I'm going in. I had like thirty points, a bunch of rebounds, um, but also like. That was my first time, first time playing in games with the three point line Push back, back further. It make a difference. So I'm it? like, I'm everything in my body trying to get the ball to the rim by like the fourth quarter, and it's longer games. I'm having to do more. I'm cramping up, but I, I didn't care. Like, the, you I, ain't pulling I, no, me out this no, game. <laughs> I had to stop the game like four or five times for me cramping up, but I was gonna, I was gonna finish it. So, um, had some success in in, in, the, in the exhibition games, and and the season started. Um, and it's crazy. It's, it's just the way that business is. When I got there, my teammate, it was a six, seven kid. He was from, um, University of San Diego, just fresh out of college. Um, he could shoot it. He was like a, a stretch four man. And, um, you know, we're playing in, in our first couple of regular season games and I'm doing the majority of the work and he's struggling. I'm just looking at it from afar. I'm like, damn. I ain't looking good for him. <laughs> <laughs> I've been through that. I've been yeah, like, uh-oh. Yeah, I see. Don't check your phone later. Yeah. So, it's tough. Um, next thing you know, he tells me, he's like, yeah, uh, I want to call me. <laughs> we do a time. I'm like, yup, my up. It was nice knowing. I know the feeling. I know the feeling. So, they uh, so land up sending him home. And so, like, then, like, like the next game, um, like we didn't have another American. They said they're gonna bring another win. So, play the next game, and um, I think we we ended up winning because we we had a Swedish Swedish big man. It was good. Um, he, he he went to college over here in the United States. Oh, back yeah, over there. So he got that. Yeah, so he, he he was he was good. And so we we were fine without another American. Then the, the other American came in. His name was Chris McKnight. He was like six seven. Uh, went to the University of Akron. Um, I feel like I know who that is. Chris McKnight, he yeah. was cool, cool, cool dude. I love him. We're still, we're still cool. He's still playing actually. Um, 
so he, he came over and, and we hit it off. We, we, we hit it off as you know as friends. Hung out a whole bunch and um, had 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 a really really good year. I ended up being an all star that year. Nice. Um, which was really really cool and and, and I I love the experience. I love the the the, the, the team. Um, the city was real cool. Uh, great support. And uh, so I ended up making it to the playoffs. And, you know, once you, you make the playoffs, you get that, that bonus check. So I'm like, okay, hey. you know. But we, we got the eight seed going in. No, I'm sorry, seven seed going in the playoffs, seven seed. And so we were playing the two seed, top eight teams made the playoffs. And, you know, I, it was it was a tough team. We, we beat them once. It was really Bemba's team. Yeah. Um, so I knew it was going to be tough for us to, to, to beat them in a series of, you know, of – was it seven. five, seven? Seven, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So at that point, I'm like, shoot, uh, we may not win, but let me just extend this one more week so I can get one more check. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, right. Yeah, so we ended, up, we ended up losing four to two, but I got those two extra checks. Yeah, yeah, it worked. So, um, yeah, so that so ended up going home. Um, and I, and I, I would have went back to that club, that club to play. Um, but I had some coaching opportunities, and, and, I, and I struggled being away from my daughter. Um, for such a long time because it was, you know, it's nine months out of the Dang year and you're gone. Lord. So you come back for a couple months and it's right back to it. So uh, I, I made the decision to get into coaching. So you ended your career the way on a high, your basketball career. On a high note, yes. And and towards the end of the year, my knee was bothering me. And I, I went in and they, 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 they looked at it and they said it was some, some cartilage torn. And I was just That's like, what it was for me. I'm not getting another surgery. I don't want another surgery. I'm not getting another surgery. So it was a little bit of both. Well, from what it sounded like, I needed the exit that you had because I, I had the surgery after I was like, man, I'm not going to get another chance. But yeah. you got that second chance, yeah. and then you stepped away. So yeah. that's cool. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. And I, and I, even after that, you know, my first year at, uh, coaching at Emporia State, um, I got an offer from a team in Iceland. It was like cheap, but I think it was like two grand a month. I'm yeah, like, I, I ain't buddy do, playing in Iceland. I'm, like, I ain't do, I, I'm not gonna do that. And so um, passed up on a couple opportunities to go play. Got got a, got another offer a couple of years later from a team in in China. Passed up on that. Um, I got to pay decent money though. They do. They do. It, was, it was good money. It, it was, was good, good money? money. Yeah, it was good money. What's and good money? money? Talk to me. It Talk to like, me. It was like five a month. Oh, that's real yeah, good. Yeah, it was like yeah, five a month, solid. which is good over there. Nine months, tax free, all that other stuff provided. Um, you know, that's that's really good money over here. So, mm-hmm. um, pass up on that stuff because I, I I I was in the point where you know I thought I was gonna be able to have a successful career in coaching. And you which probably weren't working out as hard no more. Once you stop that kind of work yeah, workout, yeah, it's, it's a hard. Different, yeah, a different beast. It's a it different is. beast. So you, you got to really be motivated to do it on your own. Shoot, you're probably still turning down offers now, coaching Team yeah. Griffin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, been Who a is while. this? It's been a while. Since Utopia. I got one <laughs> Zimbabwe. <laughs> Wakanda. <laughs> My people. <laughs> Wakanda. Hey. If that suit come in the deal, yeah, I'm in. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. Yeah. Man, that's what's up, man. This dude just dropped gems that he picked up from these gems, and we appreciate you. Tawn, talk to him one time before we get up out of here. Uh, man, just definitely glad to get a chance to hear, you know, Kellen's background story. I've known him for about maybe six, seven years, kind of just knowing him on the court, but not really get to know his background. So it was good to really kind of get to – Pick his brain a little bit, see where he really had to come from and had to do to accomplish everything he got. So, nice, nice, man, nice. Really excited, too. If you got any questions for Kellen, leave a comment. I will literally call him at 5 in the morning to ask him the questions that y'all got for him. So, leave a comment, comment, comment. And thanks for tuning in to How Basketball Saved My Life. You want to say any Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all, man. Support these two dudes. How? Appreciate it.